Today, the option is whether you go for those reforms by yourselves, with your time, with your conditions, with your negotiations, and with your equilibria among the political parties and among the political sectors of the Slovenian population, or whether this will be imposed upon you because the markets will close down on you and they will fall on you like a ton of bricks, which is already happening to some extent because 7% is considered in many cases as kind of the threshold of whether you should go for support or not. But the problem is, if you go for support, you will still have to do every single one of the reforms that we have just mentioned, and maybe more. You cannot avoid it. So if you have the choice of doing it yourselves, then why not? This takes unity, this takes consensus, this takes a minimum of I could call common sense. But if the opposition today ever think that they're going to inherit power sometime, they're going to pick up the pieces if they don't contribute to the reforms today. And they're going to have to put together the pieces very painfully. It's not going to be a very strong, big, united Slovenia that they're going to inherit. So again, you know, why not? You're going to have to go through the changes one way or the other. Why not do it your way rather than Brussels or Berlin or, you know, whatever. Ob strateškem forumu na Bledu smo se imeli priložnost seznaniti s precej jasnimi, dokaj ostrimi stališči generalnega sekretarja OECD-ja, tudi v kontekstu tujih investicij, reforme pokojninskega sistema in drugih reform, kar je ena od osrednjih tem investitorskega srečanja, ki ga vse slovensko združenje malih delničarjev skupaj s Svetovno federacijo investitorjev, Evropskim združenjem delničarjev in Evropsko federacijo uporabnikov finančnih storitev pripravlja od 19. do 21. septembra v Ljubljani. Osrednji del bo potekal v Cankarjevem domu kot investitorska konferenca, pa tudi sejem, na katerem se bodo predstavili potencijali podjetja institucije iz Republike Slovenije. Želimo poiskati ustrezne odgovore in argumentirane poti, napotila za aktivnosti, tudi iz naslova najkompetentnejših gostov, ki jih bomo v tem kontekstu gostili iz vsega sveta, iz 55 držav, organizacij delničarjev, investitorjev, njihovih predstavnikov, blizu 100 jih bomo gostili in vsekakor želimo s tem pri pomoči, da se poda ustrezne odgovore in rešitve tudi iz tega naslova za situacijo, s katero se v Republiki Sloveniji soočamo, pa tudi širše. We are experiencing the fifth year of the crisis. In fact, it looks like the sixth year is going to be just as difficult. In spite of some stabilization and improvement, the economic recovery is faltering. We should be clearly out of the problem by now, and we're not. Countries are making huge efforts to reverse these trends, trying to implement new policies to reactivate growth and reactivate employment. But the world economy is still haunted by a series of imbalances and destabilizing factors. Here in Europe, the current financial and sovereign debt crisis is a clear example. European recovery efforts are undermined by a growing confidence crisis in financial markets and national banking sectors coupled with another confidence crisis among investors and consumers. If we add a credit squeeze, persisting fiscal consolidation, extremely high sovereign yields, then we have the perfect recipe for a prolonged European slowdown or even a contraction. Over the past two decades, Slovenia has had impressive success in economic and social development. Bold decisions, sound economic policy, hard work, 
yielded success and resulted in relative stability, which helped the country achieve important progress while reducing its levels of inequality. However, since the outbreak of the global crisis, Slovenia's economy has been slowing down, and now actually it is in recession. Actually, uh, kind of a double dip, because in 2009, of course, you suffered a very great contraction, and now you're back there, like many other European countries, but that should not be a very great consolation. Our latest economic outlook projects a GDP contraction of 2%. So minus 2% growth in 2012, maybe a slight contraction in 2013, much more shallow, you know, much less pronounced. In this context, Slovenia's unemployment rate has reached almost 9% in the first uh, quarter of 2012. Again, the average in the OECD is 8%. So again, don't take a lot of consolation that you're better off than the Eurozone or whatever. Um, the problem is that the governments do not have much firepower to reverse these trends these days, and Slovenia is not an exception. Public finances in Slovenia are weak, despite a relatively low public debt to GDP. You know, you have 47% at the end of last year, you're probably now close to 50% because we're in September. Um, 50% is double what you had four years ago. But it's half the average of the OECD. So, the good news and the bad news. What you don't want is to continue at this speed. You know, bullets kill you, not because they're very big. You can go like that with a bullet, nothing happens to you. Just, but if they're shot at you, at 300 miles an hour or whatever, you know, they go through you. Uh, the speed at which you are accumulating debt in Slovenia is unsustainable. And the fact that you are now hopefully going to go to about half of the 6.4% debt of last year, maybe to three and a half, is in and of itself, if you, can, if you can swing that one or anywhere close to that, it's huge, it's big. It's a very big effort, but I have to say, it's a message you have to give out because, again, you have doubled in four years the debt to GDP ratio. To avoid a worsening of the crisis and to avoid having to request international financial support, Slovenia would need to implement decisive reforms as soon as possible. Urgent action is required to strengthen competitiveness and achieve sustainable economic growth. Let me bring to your attention six key recommendations, maybe seven. First, consumers and businesses need a healthy banking sector. Despite repeated recapitalizations, the state-controlled banks in Slovenia still appear too thinly capitalized to absorb both losses and continue to finance the economy. Remember, banks are supposed to finance the economy, not just to avoid bankruptcy. Urgent action is required to improve the bank's equities position. And uh, of course, we're saying orderly deleveraging of banks in the corporate sector is key to restoring sound growth. Here we are a little bit schizophrenic because we're asking the banks both to be prudent and capitalize themselves and at the same time to continue to lend. Second, to strengthen public finances, fiscal consolidation should curb the structural deficit by rationalizing public administration, education, healthcare spending, and cash transfers. This has also to do with the governance of the public finances. Have you heard about the golden rule? <laughs> Why do you have such big discussion? Whether to make it a law or put it in the constitution, that's fascinating. Because if you're willing to put it into a law, then why would you not put it in the Constitution if it's supposed to be a good thing? Germany has it in the Constitution, and Italy has it in the Constitution, and Spain has it in the Constitution. It's about credibility. It's a message. It's a signal. 
It's a language. So I'd say, don't talk about it for too long. Just do it. And it's going to be part of the way back into access to markets and maybe to lower those 7% interest rates that you're paying for the debt today. Third, there is significant scope for increasing productivity and upgrading the economy. Boosting innovation capacity will be essential. Slovenia needs to restructure its economy towards more knowledge-based activities. This calls for the reform of universities, public research organizations, as well as streamlining of public policy and funding to increase the economic and social benefits of R&D. Slovenia's labor market is rigid and hampers economic adjustment. Labor market dualism should be addressed by reducing what is the OECD's second highest degree of protection of regular employees. This is a silver medal many of you did not know you had. What does it translate into? Rigidity. Because this protects regular employment, which means the guys that are in the market, inside the guys that are already inside the system. But it keeps everybody else out because the employers run out of appetite to hire more people because it's so expensive to hire or to fire people and because they're afraid of you know, union uh, uh, activity or whatever. And then what happens? Who are the ones who stay outside? The young. So it's a paradox. We're trying to protect the workers. And in the process, we actually do what is the worst thing for all workers, which is reduce the potential for creating new jobs. Fifth, Slovenia has one of the least sustainable pension systems in the OECD. It stems from a combination of significant pension generosity and rapid aging of the population. Pension expenditure is projected to increase by 7 to 10 percentage points. And to reverse the trend, the effective retirement age should be increased, but also net replacement rates should be reduced. It's interesting when you see which were the countries that had the most generous um, pension systems in terms of replacement and contributions, whatever? Would you believe it? Greece, Spain, Italy, Portugal, Slovenia. Our performance review observes that Slovenia could do more in the areas of green tax reform removal of environmentally harmful subsidies, such as support for coal-fired energy plants. We recommend a shift in the tax burden from capital, from labor, towards the environmental harmful emissions. You know, what's happening in the world? Basically, people are reducing the cost of creating jobs, the tax cost of creating jobs, and social contributions, etc. They are reducing the burden on companies, on creating wealth and job opportunities, etc., investment. They are increasing consumption taxes, i.e. the VAT. But then uh, there's also property taxes, and there's also green taxes. Not only do we recommend that you uh, dismantle the subsidies for the consumption of fossil fuels, but also that you actually tax emissions or tax the sources of emissions. Now, here ideally would be the day when you arrive and say, no revenue, because nobody is emitting anymore, you know? But I don't think we're there yet. Our governments have the duty to find new sources of growth, new sources of jobs, new sources of trust. Our view is that the only way they can do it is by implementing big policy changes on three parallel tracks. And particularly when you run out of monetary policy room, interest rates are at zero or pretty close, you run out of fiscal policy room, everybody's now trying to bring down the deficits and the debt rather than spend their money out of the recession. So what do we say? 
Well, our battle cry is threefold. We say, go structural, go social, and go green. We recommend governments to go structural because all our countries still have significant space for upgrading their economies with reforms that can deliver growth and employment governments, uh, uh, growth and employment. No, oh, it's, it's basically the things we've always known that will keep growth going. Education, innovation, competition, deregulation, decentralization, uh, you know, uh, flexibility in the labor markets and in the uh, product markets, uh, R&D, the universities, taxes, health infrastructure. This is what is going to keep the growth going in the medium and long term. This is why we're saying go structural. When we say go social, we say that because the impact of the crisis on families has been devastating. And because we see significant room to improve social policy, Going social is about policies in taxes, education, health, social security, migration, gender, job creating measures, bringing women and other underrepresented groups to the labor markets, and tackling inequality. Green today in the middle of the crisis, you say, for heaven's sake, Mr. Gurria, please, you know. Give me black jobs, brown jobs, striped jobs, checkered jobs, yellow jobs, any kind of jobs. They don't have to be green. You know, green is probably, green is probably a luxury we cannot afford. Wrong. Wrong. There is an intergenerational responsibility. And what we're doing today, even in the midst of a crisis, is going to affect the world that we will face in our generation and two generations we are already on a collision course with nature. If we don't change course, we're gonna be producing many more particles per million, and we're gonna be warming much more than the two uh, degrees that we said were the maximum we were willing to uh, take. And, um, and uh, we're going to overshoot by 2020, and then it's gonna be a lot longer and a lot more expensive to come down to the path uh, of the two degrees and the 450 particles per million, which we all agreed worldwide that we should be working on. And by inaction, we've letting it, you know, deteriorate constantly. But green is not just about climate change. Green is a whole way of looking at the economies. Um, and uh, the transit to low carbon economies can be in itself an important source of innovation, of entrepreneurship, of growth and jobs, while reducing the resource bottlenecks and the natural imbalances. Uh, I very much hope that these new ideas or maybe some of these so not, not so new ideas, but the new solutions and the new policies will come from people like you, better policies, for better lives. The OECD stands ready to help you. Thank you very much. Mreža je deje nova, nestrankarska i neodvisna mladinska inicijativa, ki je bila ustanovljena za to, da širi aktivno državljanstvo in duh podjetništva med slovenskimi mladimi. Zdravam poorganiziramo tudi poslovna kosila in danes je za nami največji izmed njih. Na današnjem poslovnem kosilu smo gostili Jose Angela Gorijo, generalnega sekretarja OECD. Na tem poslovnem kosilu smo gostili 100 top slovenskih gospodarstvenikov, politikov, diplomatov in tako naprej, 50 mladim pa smo omogočili prezplačno deležbo. Moram reči, da se bomo z veseljem udeležili velike naložbene konference, ki je organizira VZMD, prav kratkem v Cankarjem domu v Ljubljani. Najlepša hvala.